Grace, mercy, and peace to all listening to our Leeward Islands District devotions today. This is Reverend Bonnie Byron, um, minister in the Nevis Circuit. Our opening hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Come now to the throne of grace in prayer. Let us pray. O gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you on this blessed day to praise you, to worship you, to give you thanks, Lord God. You've been so good to us. We give you thanks, Lord God, for life and health and strength and energy. We give you thanks for the beauty of nature, the sun that shines, the rain that falls upon our thirsty land. 
But most of all, we thank you for sending our only Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to die in our place. Today, as we come at the start of this new day, we pray that you will lead us throughout this day and indeed throughout the remainder of this week. Look down upon us with mercy and compassion and help our motto to be, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. These and all of the mercies we ask, in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 22. Let us hear the word of the Lord. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repay evil for evil. But always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. My meditation to you this morning, an attitude of gratitude. We are in the season of Thanksgiving. Indeed, every day should be Thanksgiving day. We need to give God praise and thanks every day of our lives for the many blessings that he showers upon us. Unfortunately, we often forget to pause to give God thanks for his many blessings. It is sad that we take so many of God's blessings for granted. So many of us, only when we are in a crisis, remember to turn to God. Then what, when all is well again, we go our merry way, like the nine ungrateful le lepers, completely forgetting to give God thanks for his many blessings. Those nine lepers, we are told, once they were healed, completely forgot about God and went on their merry way to return to their families, friends, and former lives that they had to leave when they became sick with leprosy in the first instance. Ungrateful men they were indeed, and ungrateful too are all of us who forget to pause to give God thanks. The Apostle Paul usually included an expression of thanksgiving in the opening section of his letters. He did this in all his epistles except the one that he wrote to the Galatians. His first letter to the Thessalonians was filled with expressions of, of thanksgiving. Again and again, he gave thanks to God for the Thessalonian Christians. He had other instructions as well for the Thessalonians, but he focused on giving thanks. He had a special interest in the church at Thessalonica, for he and Silas had planted that church on his second missionary journey. 
Paul compared his feelings for the Thessalonians to the love that parents have for their children. Paul had reason to be proud of these people. He and Silas had barely gotten the church started before they were run out of town by a jealous mob. In spite of this, the church at Thessalonica continued to grow and flourish. It was no wonder then that Paul always thought of them with fondness, for they had made him proud with their commitment to the cause of Christ. Paul gave thanks to God for the Thessalonians every opportunity he got to do so. He gave thanks for their work of faith, their labor of love, their steadfastness of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul refers to faith, hope, and love as the highest of virtues. So it is no surprise that he refers to them here again. For the Thessalonians, Christianity was not just a belief. It was a dynamic force that was at the root of their lives, the foundation. It motivated their whole lives. For them, Christianity was a way of life. Their faith was real to them and carried them through every trial and every tribulation. Paul gave thanks to God in every situation, no matter what the circumstances were. Paul teaches us that we must do the same, give thanks to God in all circumstances. This, my friends, is no easy thing to do, but we have found that practice makes perfect. It means that we must practice to give God thanks, even when we don't feel like it. James 1.17 tells us that God is the source of all good things. Sadly, we do not give him the honor and praise that he deserves. In Philippians 4 and verse 6, Paul tells us to give thanks when we pray. We must pray with thanksgiving. We must let our requests be known unto God. If we are to be an effect, have an effective prayer life, we must pray always with thanksgiving. Let us remember that Jesus shed his precious blood so that we could have the privilege of prayer. It is therefore an honor and a privilege to have the gift of prayer. We must remember that in other parts of the world, there are those who cannot pray publicly. They can only pray in private. And so we must give thanks for this great gift that we can practice in public and in private. We must give thanks for the privilege of freedom of worshiping God, public worship and private worship. Psalm 100 tells us to serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with thanksgiving. This means that real worship is worship given with a thankful heart. If we do not have a heart that is thankful to God for his many blessings, then my friends, we cannot truly worship God. It is important to practice giving thanks to God if we are to truly worship God. Paul teaches us that the only way to real happiness is to have an attitude of gratitude to God in our lives. In so doing, we will experience real contentment, peace of mind, and life everlasting. And so I encourage you as I encourage myself, let us endeavor to give thanks in all circumstances, for it is the will of God in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, now and forevermore, amen. And so Lord God, as we come to the end of this short meditation, we give you thanks, Lord God, in all circumstances 
and help us as we live out each day never to forget to give you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us hear our prayers today lord god and let our cries come unto you our final hymn today come you thankful people come raise the song of harvest home Benediction may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.